Hey everyone, it's Jared from Drumeo, and we are on the road in Farmingdale, New York, at the D'Addario headquarters. And today we're going to tour the Evans factory with Sergio. Sergio, you ready for this? Heck yeah, Jared, let's do it, man. Put in the secret codes, man. Yeah, yeah. Make myself I a little shorter. And it should be on stilts, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, first stop is going to be hoop forming. As you guys know, drum heads are really made of two different parts. One being the aluminum hoop, two being the film, the striking area. So, all of our aluminum comes in these coiled bands, as you see here, on top of the skid. We unravel this, and then we load it into our hoop formers that you'll see right behind me. When the aluminum goes in, it goes in as a flat band. When it comes out, looks something like this. Inside this machine, we call this our, our hoop former, uh, there's a series of rollers. And each of these rollers has a slightly different shape, so the aluminum is gradually bent from that flat band into this hoop shape. The little rollover sets Evans apart from other manufacturers. A small amount of flux solder is applied to close the hoop. After that, it's the film cutting. All kinds of material go through the same process. Here we'll cut films into a whole bunch of different diameters for different size heads. Uh, right now, it looks like we're cutting some maybe 18 or 20 inch base heads. And uh, you know they, they'll all get cut uh, by a blade. And then the operator here will pick them off the line and load them onto the scales that help keep track of all the quantities of the product. So switching between different head sizes is actually very simple. This is all done digitally. so. All the operator has to do is go over to the computer there, type in the head size, and it'll all you know, get worked out through our computer systems. Consistency is key here, right? And that's a big part of our processes. And we have quality control inspectors to make sure that every time a film is cut, that it's made to our specifications. And you know, we've hardly ever seen much variation in the different types of products that we make. Hydraulic drum heads, made famous by Evans in the 70s and 80s. First, she's going to load the film, then applies a small amount of oil onto it. Then adds the second layer of film and sandwiches the oil in between the two layers. These help to control, sustain, and overtone. It makes the drums sound fat and minimizes unwanted resonance. a perfect example of some of our conga heads before they get turned into a finished product. So we'll layer two of these on top of each other um, to create a drum head that has a very high collar to replicate the natural shape of, a, of a, a conga skin. Little holes are punched through around the outside edge of the head. This is where the glue will flow through inside the hoop, allowing for a strong bond. How do you know how many holes to cut? That's a great question. You want to count them? How many are there? I don't even know, man. I have never. Well, come on, that. man. <laughs> Next is where level 360 technology really comes into play. They bend the collar shape into the film with heat. After that, the film is hand placed inside the hoop and it's ready for gluing. Then the head is loaded onto the gluing plate and the glue is applied. When the glue is poured inside the hoop and solidifies, the little lip curved in from the outside edge prevents the glue from ever coming out. Have at it, man. See, see if you can do it. <laughs> Sorry. See if I can do it. You're not, you're not very, uh, you're not very <laughs> confident. There we go. You got it? There it is. Uno. <laughs> but it has fingerprints all over it now. Yeah. All right, I'm a big fan of coated heads, and so this is one of the processes I wanted to see. How exactly do you guys do this? Sure, so all the heads obviously get loaded in clear. As the heads come into this box, they start to rotate on the disc that they're sitting on. So the nozzle will move along with the rotating head so that coating is applied evenly across the surface. The main kind of coating that we use is our white coating, which you'll find on G1s, G2s, you know, some of our base sets, some of our most popular 
snare heads as well. Um, but we also use a frost coating, which has a translucent kind of a clear finish. The other kind of coating that we do is a strata coating, which you'll find on our orchestral heads, our timpani heads, our concert bass heads. It's a much thinner, more sensitive coating. Doesn't have as, as much of a rough texture as you see, uh, you know, because these, these kinds of coatings here, um, we really want to amplify brush playing. Uh, the strata coating is more for orchestral sensitivity and light, you know, light articulate playing. I want a Drumio Blue signature snare drum head. Oh boy. The first signature snare drum head. Yeah. <laughs> So EC2s, uh, they feature our sound shape technology, or edge control rings, so we call them. Uh, and those get printed on the bottom surface of the drum head, as you see happening behind me. Uh, it's basically a giant version of your desktop like inkjet printer that you have at home uh, that also has these ultraviolet lights on the underside. So if you see under the print head, there are those blue kind of uh, lamps. Those help to cure the ink as it passes over. This is built in, so you really don't have to modify or add more damping to your drum head. It's ready to go right out of the box. Every single Diodario product goes here in New York before shipping out globally. So it's been great touring the Evans factory and seeing how drum heads are made. I have a much deeper appreciation for the thought and care and attention to detail that goes into making these great heads.